Hey guys, what's going on? Today what I'm going to be walking through is how do you build your own password generator? And we're going to be using a very straightforward code and I want to go through some of the basics of Python here uh, using things like try accept blocks um, and while statements. So we're not going to do any fancy machine learning or any fancy Django work today. It's really just more of the basics because I've got some requests for some people saying, you know, how do I do things like try accept blocks and while loops? And I thought this would be a really good tutorial to help people do this. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to walk you through a demo of exactly what this tool does. So you would go into your terminal or command line or whatever it is and type in Python and then grab this file that I have. I'm going to put this up on GitHub for you guys to play around with. And you do that. And the first question it's going to ask you is how long do you want your password to be? And I would say something like, let's say 10 characters. And then it's going to give me a couple of options. Text only, numbers only, alphanumeric and alphanumeric with special characters. And it's got some error checking in here as well. So for example, if I hit L, it'll say, you know, please enter a number. If I hit a number that's outside of the range, it'll say wrong selection. Please select a number from the list. So let's just go ahead and say text only. And it says, there you go. So here's a password for you, which is right there. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger and we're going to do this a few times. So there we go. So I just made that a little bit bigger. Let's run this again. And so this time I'm going to say desired password as I want it to be 40 characters and we'll go text only. So there you go. Now I have something that is 40 characters and it's text only. So you can go ahead and play with this and, you know, pick whatever you want. I could pick 40 characters again and just do numbers only and it does numbers only as well. So why am I showing you this? This seems like a very basic program. You'd be surprised to know that some of the most common passwords today are highly hackable passwords. So maybe in another upcoming video, I'll teach you about how you hash a password and how your password is stored as a hash variable with most websites today, like social networks and stuff. Challenge being is that it's very easy to go ahead and hack some of those low security passwords just by using tools like Hashcat or another tool called John the Ripper. And there's also work being done right now using things like GANs, which are generative adversarial networks, to say how you can actually crack passwords using machine learning. So these are some of the things we'll cover in the future. But I wanted to give you an idea of what this code does. And let's just go through one more example again. And this time we will pick 25. And this time I'll just say it's alphanumeric. So, And so these are passwords that you can actually use in your own social networks. Um, you know, some other tips that you guys should be using when you're securing your passwords is also use two factor authentication because that will send you a special message on your phone or through email for you to confirm a code before you get access into things. And hacking nowadays really starts with having a secure password. So use a utility like this, or you can go online and pick your own utility. There's a whole bunch online that you can generate your own password. And first line of defense is always have a very strong password. So let's walk through the code and let me show you how we did this. So to do this, I really left it at basic bare bones Python. There's nothing I had to go ahead and import from a library standpoint. These are all pre-built libraries within Python. So I'm going to import string and I import random. And those are the only two that I need. I have two sets of while statements. The first one is to catch any errors when a person has entered the desired length of their password. So for example, if I go back here and instead of my desired length, again, I go ahead and enter a letter. It's going to say, please enter a number. And so I can enter whatever, you know, like I said, I want 60 and then I pick four and it'll give me something that's 60 characters. And so really what it's doing here is it's saying, okay, enter in whatever you're going to put in. If there's a value error, meaning that it does not match an integer, then go ahead and say, please enter a number. And it's going to go back and ask you to do this again because it's wrapped in a while loop. And then the second piece is when it actually asks me the second question, it does the exact same thing. So once I get past this while loop, it'll do another loop here and it does the check again, the try block check. If it's not an integer, because that's what I'm taking in, because my input is going to be either one, two, three, or four. So if it's not an integer, then it's automatically going to default down here and say, please enter a number. But if it's outside of the range of one to four, then it's going to say else wrong selection. Please select a number from the list. And it's going to go back up and try this again until I actually break out of the loop. And the only way to break out of the loop is when I actually have a successful selection. Otherwise, it's going to just keep going right back up here and keep doing this over and over again. 
And so you may be wondering, you know, for somebody who does some advanced level Python, why am I even teaching you something like this? The message that I'm trying to drive here is not necessarily building this kind of a program, but it's really about protecting yourselves. Um, you know, there's a stat out there that says almost about 81% of company data breaches happen due to poor passwords. And so protecting yourself and protecting your identity is absolutely key. And so if I can actually even put out a utility like this to encourage you guys to go ahead and update your passwords and make them a lot more secure, then I feel that I'm at least contributing something to your safety as you you know, move forward online into different things. And the breaches of passwords and, and poor passwords are only going to get worse over time. Um, another stat is saying that a lot of people are actually moving away from large organizational breaches but also increasing ransomware on independent people or individuals because they know that their likelihood to pay in certain cases because of the value of their data is going to be that much higher. And so with all these different issues in the hacking committee going on, and while I'm talking about hacking and being safe, I should also bring up a method of how you actually keep yourself safe while you're browsing online. And that includes using a VPN service. And the VPN service that I choose to use has always been NordVPN. I've been a client of theirs for the last five years. I know with Black Friday coming up, they got some amazing cyber deals. Um, so you should go ahead and check that out. Uh, link is gonna be in the description. So check them out and sign up. This is actually just the first video I'm gonna be introducing. I will be walking through and going through different things out there, you know, including things like how to protect yourself from a Wi-Fi hack, how to protect yourself from the man in the middle hack. Uh, possibly going through some machine learning um, with password hacking and what that's going to encourage you to do over time is to be more selective and careful on how you pick your passwords. There's actually a paper that was written um, called Passcan and that's really a deep learning approach for password guessing. This is actually where they use a GAN to go ahead and guess your password. And so it's been actually somewhat successful to a certain degree. And if you read through the paper, there's also a whole bunch of other different sources online that talk a little bit about this. They also use LSTMs, which is a form of an RNN to try to guess the next letter in the password based on test data set. So a lot of advancements happening and it's always important to stay ahead of this stuff. So please consider this a little bit of education, but at the same time, a little bit of coding. So if you did like that, please consider liking and subscribing and I will see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.